Hi, this is Brent with Emotiva Audio, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to properly configure your speaker preset in your XMC2 or RMC processor to get the best result from Dirac Live and to avoid some common pitfalls that you may encounter. When preparing to run Dirac Live with your XMC2 or RMC processor, there are really just a few things that need to be configured in the processor first in the speaker preset for which you're wanting to run a Dirac filter. Note that between the two speaker presets, you must enter the speaker preset for which you're wanting to create the Dirac filter, and your different presets can each house up to three individual Dirac filters at a time based on the speaker configuration set for the preset chosen. In this case, I'm gonna enter speaker preset one because I want to run a Dirac filter for that preset. And once I get inside that speaker preset, the only thing from factory settings that I really need to change is the size menu within that speaker preset. Most importantly, I need to make sure that I only have speakers set as active, small or large, that are actually connected to the processor. In this case, we're gonna be running a 7.1.4 speaker configuration for this Dirac filter. So I'll have my fronts, I'll leave them as small, but you can set them either as small or large. That designation is not important for Dirac as it is going to correct the full frequency range of the speaker, whether it's set to small or large. Um, so I'll leave my front set to small, my center and my surrounds and my rears for my seven base surround channels. But in this case, because I'm not running widths, I want to set those to none. If we leave what I call phantom channels active in the processor when we run Dirac, the Dirac software pulls the speaker configuration information from this size menu and will try to send test tones to, uh, in this case, front widths if they were still set as active. That will cause an error message when Dirac does not hear any response from those phantom channels. I'm also going to go ahead and set my left right sub outputs to none because I'm only running a single sub on the center sub output and then my four height channels will be comprised of the rear height and front height. So again, most important is that you only have speakers active in the size menu that are actually connected to the processor so that they can play back test tones. Once we've configured the size menu, we're really ready to go ahead and run Dirac. However, it's very common for uh, users to have also entered either levels or distance information before running the Dirac software. First, I'll talk about distances. Distances can be entered uh, before you run the Dirac software, and they will be ignored and overwritten once you export a Dirac filter to the processor. So even if you have distances entered here, you can leave them as is. There's no need to zero those out. They will simply be ignored once you uh, load a Dirac filter. However, it is very important that any levels that have been previously set in the speaker preset are set back to zero dB either before or even after you export a Dirac filter into the speaker preset. Uh, these levels will be applied on top of whatever adjustments are performed by the Dirac filter. They will be ignored while Dirac runs its sweeps. However, once the Dirac filter is loaded back on the processor, you are able to, for example, adjust the level of your center uh, up one, two, three dB, whatever your preference, on top of whatever the Dirac filter um, has adjusted on that channel. This gives the user some manual adjustability on top of whatever Dirac decides to do with your speakers. However, if you leave level adjustments in this portion of the menu after the Dirac filter has been loaded, you will not actually hear the Dirac filter on its own unless you set these levels back to zero. Once you have properly configured your size menu so that it reflects the actual speaker layout in your room and you've made sure to set any levels entered 
to zero, then you'll be ready to run the Direct Live software. It is also within each of the two speaker presets that you will navigate to the Direct Live option and as long as the processor sees the Direct Network interface box connected to your network, you will be able to place an X in the enable box, open the Direct Live software, and uh, complete your measurements. Once you place an X in the enable box for Direct Live in the processor, you must leave this box marked with an X while you open the Direct Live software and you will not be able to navigate out of this menu unless you use the down arrow to remove the X from the enable box. The X should be left in the enable box throughout the duration of running the Direct Live software. Thanks for joining me today, and hopefully this video uh, helped you configure your speaker preset to get the best result from your Direct Live filter. From everyone here at Emotiva, happy listening.